garden of Paris's Palais Royal, the Joyce Gallery, where dresses are displayed like works of art. All of them the work of Tunisian designers. They're here thanks to a project spearheaded by the Federation for Tunisian Couture, which aims to position historic Tunisian expertise within the global luxury goods market. We're really happy because we've got some important buyers here and lots of journalists who weren't able to come to this year's Tunis Fashion Week. This lets us reach a wider public, so this idea of having a sort of Fashion Week after party in Paris at the Joyce Gallery, well, we're really proud and very happy for our stylists. The exhibition is in part an homage to Fela, the first Arab-African woman to head up a major fashion house. In the 60s, she dressed Michelle Morgan and Grace Kelly. She wasn't in the limelight. She had a lot of success and recognition abroad, but not so much at home. Because here, she was still very much as the local seamstress, the local tailor. The Tunisian textile industry employs 200,000 people, but the country now wants to design, a move supported by the European Union since the 1990s. Most of the businesses that have this know-how, they export everything they do. They export everything, and that's just how it is. So for young designers who want to set up their own label, well, they have to work with businesses that are especially adapted to the local market. A few weeks earlier in Tunis, a host of fashion houses are preparing to reveal their collections at Tunis Fashion Week. Mademoiselle Essie is new on the scene, a winner of the Mediterranean Fashion Industry Prize in Marseille. The label now needs to build that all-important network. From my side of things, having a good address book is all about enabling people from the world of luxury goods to meet. The professionals, the big buyers, people who are going to help the new arrivals settle in and develop their label, starting in Tunisia but then expanding out to the international scene. Hend Gazmi and Cyrine Ferrand met at Tunisian fashion school. Their contrasting personalities are reflected in their work, an interplay between rigidity and fluidity. They create sensual lines which can be modified if needed. We'll work according to demand. For example, with the runway shows. We have the shorts under a transparent material. But if the client wants a pair of shorts, a skirt or a lining, we'll adjust the item accordingly. Yes, because with dresses like this, you're practically naked. Yes, it's true that it's a little, well, we let our clients decide. That's for the show. In Tunisia, women can choose to wear the veil or not. An autonomy won in large part thanks to President Bourguiba. In 1956, just after Tunisia gained independence, he introduced the Code of Personal Status, which afforded women freedoms they'd previously been denied. In Tunisia, it's a rather unusual situation for women. We're much freer here than in other Arab countries. It's true that men here are still pretty macho, but we work with what we've got and try to improve. We try to open people's mind with regard to equality. It's important. Because fashion is about showing your body, showing off your clothes, all the collections that we have the right to show off. And being a model is knowing how to use your body. I see no problem with it, because I'm part of an artistic event. It's not me that's the focus of the show, it's about the dress I'm wearing. In Tunisia, as in many other North African countries, modeling isn't considered a real career. I'm really happy to be here in my capacity as a Tunisian woman, challenging the stereotypes that the world might have about us. And I'm not the only one. All these girls are here for the same reason, to show that the recent events won't stop us, that Tunisian women are strong and that we're continuing to make progress, that we're trying to excel in what we're doing. As Tunisian women increasingly make their mark on society, the way they interact with fashion is also evolving. Today women work, and we're talking about hyperactive women, women who are present in the here and now, who want to make themselves beautiful, who follow trends, who follow fashion. Born in Tunis, Maryam Bourdabala passed through Aix-en-Provence's Fine Art University and London's Chelsea Art School before becoming a visual artist. A staunch feminist, she believes women don't need to dress up as vamps to be seductive or imitate men to assert themselves. I don't understand this suited uniformity. The black and white, the skyscraper heels, the blow dries. 
They straightened their hair, despite having wonderful, curly, wavy hair. There's an inferiority complex, which hasn't yet disappeared, unfortunately. It's a real shame. For Tunis Fashion Week, Miriam Bourdebala is paying homage to victims of terrorism, notably those killed in March's terrorist attack on the city's Bardo Museum. Proceeds from a runway show and a private fashion sale go towards maintaining the museum's cultural heritage. The terrorists took aim at something symbolic, something that's really close to our hearts. But whatever they do, they can't destroy this symbol of culture. For us, culture is our shield against ignorance and violence. In Tunisia, fashion and art are working together not only in the name of economic progress, but also as a means to counter extremism.